Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. It's uh, today's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, first of all, I'm sitting over here instead of uh, there <laughs> because we're gonna basically do what everybody is asking me to do is talk about this little thing. It's what I'm gonna do today and uh, this is a bit of a filler video. Uh, I haven't had time to do any research even though I'm stuck at home. I'm still working, yeah. Just because you're sent home doesn't mean, you know, you, you get time off. So it's not the work. Which sucks. Because there's a whole bunch of new problems. But enough about that. You've been asking me a lot of questions about this tank, and basically, I've had this thing running for about five years now. And it's, uh, it's pretty simple, actually. I do very little. My uh, premise for the tank is, I'm lazy. And that's the basic position here. The bottom is tiered, you can't really see it, but there's three tiers in here of layers of different depth. This is the lowest, and then in here there's another one that's about that much taller, and then another one a little bit taller. This provides me with a, uh, you know, more growth material and, you know, bottom for uh, the plants. So, so you can also notice that the bigger the plants, the further in they are. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of questions about how I keep the plants so lush and green. And if you look very closely, like right about here, you can see some of them I am very unsuccessful with. And others, you know, like this Anubis, uh, is a big success. Uh, this thing over here, this has a, this is basically, you know, this is my little plant machine. There's a new one here, a new one here, here, is everywhere. Even this one is starting to sprout new. This, this, all this came planted out from this and so it's down here in the corner. It's basically a quarter of the tank at this point. All the plants here were, you know, so tiny when I got them. I, I wish I had a picture. But the premise is for my growth of these plants is you gotta find a balance. This is, this is the world of lazy fish keeping. <laughs> balance is everything. First of all, when I plant these big plants, when they came in, I put in a little, you know, fertilizer ball. It gave them about six months of extra growth and extra, so they would have really strong roots. And then I basically left them alone. Some have cut down, others, you know, I haven't. And then the second part is, you know, just keeping and maintaining stability. You want stability. And that means the amount of fish and the food they get has to roughly equal what the plants can survive on, but also it wouldn't overwhelm the tank. And then you end up with a green tank like this. It's not easy, you can really fail, but you can also go really awesome. I am still having issues with this tank. This tank still requires maintenance, but I'm gonna go f into that right after. Like some of the fish I have in here, like you got your cardinal tetras, they're all over the place. Or this, they're basically the showpiece in this tank. Um, these are my second round of cardinals. I recently replaced my original batch, but roughly fits five years old. Then we have some uh, rummy nose tetras. These are at least five years old, all of them. I bought five and I have five, so that's pretty decent. <laughs> and they are five years old at this point. Then we got the, I think these are called glow light tetras. I'm not sure if it's, that's the English word, but we call them that in, in my language. Then we, I still have a few uh, black tetras. They're on the last leg that I bought them in the first run, so they're about five years old too. There's like, out of 10, I think I got like five left. Then we got some hatchet fish up here. It's nice, my fiance really wanted them. I didn't. She was like, oh, they're gonna be so cool, they're gonna run around, and they're just, they're just doing nothing really, nothing at all. Then beyond that, uh, there's of course, I have some panda corridors, and the different species of corridors, and I forgot the English word name for them, so I'm sorry I can't say it right now. I might be able to look it up. Now, they are on a rock bedding, and people would say, you know, you wouldn't want to do that with Koitoras. And, well, I've had zero issues through my entire life. I've had Koitoras since I was like 10. So, I respectfully disagree, and I have actually managed to breed the panda Koitoras in this tank. So, they seem to be doing quite well, and it does help that, you know, most of mine is covered in plants. That's basically all the showpiece animals in this tank. 
there's also a bunch of others and that's where my lacy kind of fish keeping comes in like there's uh, these nearite snails they are a godsend if you're a little lazy this entire fish tank this entire glass here and the sides in the back I have not cleaned them in three years this is a hundred I mean, it's a 190 liter tank I'll write on it what that's in US gallons I don't know because I don't live in the US so we use liters but I'll write it on three years since I got near at snails I haven't had to clean the glass in this tank so it runs very well beyond that I have and I forgot which kind it is I have an algae eater in here I'll put the name on they're hiding inside all of this there I haven't seen them that often I used to see them all you've seen them in previous videos but most of the time now they're in all of this jungle looking thing I had a major fret algae problem because as much as I want the plants to grow when you want your plants to grow you gotta give them light when you give them too much light you get algae and fret algae is well a bitch to get rid of and i had a major problem there once I, you get that it's really hard to get rid of so i got those uh, algae eaters and they basically cleared it up never had the problem since uh, beyond that before i had to basically you know yank out i don't have so much fret algae every week it was insane i also have uh, rcs shrimps in here that's more just for funsies there are like a red one right there and I don't really care about them losing their color because it's not genetics it's strains this is you know breeding and if you don't call them you're gonna end up with clear shrimp and that's okay I don't mind I just enjoy you know trying to find them that's just fun for me so so there's plenty of those and breeding those are also kind of fun you know you never know what comes out like I started with pure red and then I got a couple of a couple of green or oh, yellow ones that was a completely those jeans are completely gone there's no yellow left and I've got some blue ones and the blue ones I mainly keep in a separate tank because I would kind of want to keep those those are pretty cool looking this is fun to watch like I got a lot of brown ones suddenly this is interesting the same like if you ever breed gubbies you buy like three different colors and before you know it you end up with something you've never seen before it's just fun now I didn't mention I do have problems with this tank and well you can't see it right now but I can I have a biofilm layer right up here so we're gonna have to deal with that like right now I got that and I'm pretty sure that's because I am home all the time right now due to the, well the, basically the lockdown of my entire country means I'm home so and so is my fiance so we may have been over oh one of the corridors just went nuts <laughs> we accidentally overfed and that creates a biofilm if there's a little too much light and not enough flow and because of the plants in the background you can see those are very high they are kind of limiting the power of the you know, circulation of the flow of the top layer of the water and that effectively means you end up with biofilm and it sucks because first of all it's ugly and secondly it can actually be a major problem I'm currently you know fixing it I'm reduced feed quite heavily and then you have to get rid of it there's a little simple trick I have this it's basically just a coke bottle and a pump a small pump from a uh, was like 30 liter tank I had I put this in it works like a skimmer just put it in put it on and then it basically siphons the entire top layer this is the quick way to get rid of it a mechanical way you still have to fix the underlying issue and so I'm currently working on fixing that in this tank and I probably want to cut down some of the plants you might see that in the next video and then you can keep going and get to the stability again this was just a slightly off this is what happens when you're a lazy fish keeper like me just slide off because you also have to have somewhat limited water changes I do water changes but I only do 20% max 
and I do it every other week instead of every week to maintain the plant growth. That means, you know, I am more susceptible to these problems. I have to be on top of that. That's why I have a mechanical solution and time to figure out the other one. That's basically what this tank is. I know there's been a lot of questions and uh, requests for me to go through it. Um, that's it. Now, um, on to the another thing, you know, we're all kind of bored right now. <laughs> Most of us have been sent home. Quite a few without pay. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm sent home with pay. I'm also still working from home. I can do that. My job doesn't physically require me to be at work. So, it's, uh, it's a weird time. And, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm stuck. Uh, colleagues from work has actually been confirmed uh, to be infected. And that means I'm in a bit higher risk now for infection. So I'm basically quarantined my, myself. Luckily I've been home for a little over a week, so it's almost over. It's just, you know, stay safe. Wash your hands. Stay the fuck away from people. Basically do the thing that we always do. Don't go near other people. And until then, you know, I'm working on another video. It's gonna take a little time. It's always because, again, I'm lazy. And until then, I'll just uh, see you next time.